Hey everybody, welcome to Coffee Time. Tonight we're going to talk about whatever Stephanie has chosen. Stephanie Newland will be joining us tonight, so we'll just see where we really go from there. She said she had a good Bible study. Um, I was wanting to uh, talk about Revelation. She said that Daniel can read a lot of Revelations. And it's easy to understand, so I hear Brother Harwood. I'd like to get him on here sometimes to talk about it. He was deep on the Bible, so he knows a lot. I have read Matthew 24, and it is mainly for the Jews, but you know, we know in the last days that they're going to be attacked, and that, you know, the, the peace treaty was set aside for the Antichrist to deceive them. We also know that, but what's more important than anything, and I don't want to get into a debate about abortion, I don't want to discuss that, um, I know that um, it, you know, it's everybody's choice, but we have to live with the consequences of our choices, and the consequences are, you know, we can be forgiven and, and all is well, except we're always going to be um, hurting over that life that, uh, unless our conscience has been totally severed, which nowadays it seems like that's probably what's happened. Um, but we just have to pray for people and trust that, you know, God hears our prayers, which He does, and He will uh, cause them to be put in a position to where they'll look up to Him and be saved before it's too late because he is coming back soon, even if it isn't in our lifetime, which I think that, that it will be. I don't know about my lifetime, but I do know that things are lining up with the Word of God. It says in the last days, men will call evil good and good evil, and we can look around and see that all over the place. Um, I was in a little debate before Coffee Town started on abortion, and I'm not one to judge because uh, my sins are many. You know, I was guilty of that as well. In the 70s, they told you, you know, just to start your period, and that's all it was. So, you know, a lot of us fell to that. I know a lot of people used it for birth control, but just go have an abortion. The only thing wrong with that is whether you see that there's consequences or not, there's going to be consequences. We're going to face God, and we're going to have to give an account for everything we've ever done. When I am before the Lord, and when He asks me why, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus, and that's all we can, any of us do. Hey, Renee, and there was another lady, uh, Pam. Creek. Glad to have you all on there. We know you're going to have to join me one day on this, be my guest. Uh, tonight, we're waiting on Stephanie to join in. So, let's see. I think she might have. Nope. She's not yet. So, we're going to continue on. I know that the country is in a big uproar about the, uh, the latest ruling from the Supreme Court, and uh, it seems like that everybody's lost respect for the Supreme Court, their conscience has been severed, it's it's a sad time that we live in, we, we don't know when the Lord's coming back, but He could come back for us at any time, any time, and we're going to have to give an account for everything that we've done wrong, just like I said a while ago. Um, I'd hate to face God knowing I had to pay for what all I've done in my life. And I'm certainly thankful, forever grateful, that the blood of Jesus has been applied to my soul and that I can stand in the presence of God because of Jesus. I can kneel at the cross and then go and step in and I can She's got a lot of good things to share with us tonight. She is uh, on fire for the Lord, 
and uh, I'm so thankful for her life. So very thankful. Can't bring Stephanie out. Well, I don't know why. Let's see if we can bring her out. Because she is a wonderful person. She's Can't bring Stephanie Healing on camera. There is already a guest on this broadcast. Okay, it must be Stephanie. That's so weird that this stuff does that. Hold on, folks. Okay, it's adding, so it must be adding her. Answer from the live video guest. Okay, well, anyway, I read something that I thought was really, really amazing. You know, the, when Paul was in prison and the guard saw that they had prayed and praised their way from the chains, he was scared for him and his house. And they told him, you know, that if you just believe in God, um, Everything's going to be all right, it, and he will save you and your household. And I found this in um, Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto, unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That is a promise to your children. Hold on, let me see if I can get her back on here. We'll see. Because that would be helpful. Tracy's out this week. She had uh, sickness in the family. We want to remember Suzanne. We want to uh, remember Buster. He says so. He needs prayer. Um, this says it's adding stuff, but I don't see it yet. I... Let's see. Anyway, we may have to add you, Angie. So. Technical difficulties. I, I... The guest decline video, and she says there's technical difficulty. Okay, then uh, I guess we're going to see if we can bring someone else on and to get ready. I just can't believe that. We'll just see. We'll bring somebody on. If we don't, we do it by ourselves because the main reason we're here is to praise God. It's not to um, impress anybody with anything else about God. We just want to lift His name up in the last days. And I thank God for the opportunity to come to you all. And who knows who will see this one day and possibly get saved. Well, okay. hey, Mom. <laughs> Wow. Okay. We wish we could. I went great today, but it's not to impress anybody. So. You're fine. You're fine. We're yeah. Here to well, place. I'm cooking supper, so I didn't expect this. So. That's okay. That's fine. You can cook. We don't care. Just carry your camera around with you. That's strange that it wouldn't pick up stuff, but that's all right. Just always be ready. Be instant, and I'll see. <laughs> Yeah, well, this was pretty instant. <laughs> yeah, that's when you catch them. When they don't expect it, you send them a request. That's for sure. So, we need to pray. Angie, you got anybody on your prayer list? Um, well, there's a, a lady that I worked with and who's had a couple strokes, and she could definitely use prayer. She's struggling a lot. She's on a walker now. And she's in her 40s, in her late 40s. Oh, my goodness. Her, name, her name's Sean. 
She's a sweetheart. Don Vester and uh, Suzanne, Tracy's cousin. Uh, Kelly, we always want to remember Kelly. She's a sweet lady that's on here. Uh, we've got a lot of people that need prayer, but the truth is we need to pray that the Holy Spirit unveils the truth to these people that are causing such an uproar with, about this abortion mess. I mean, they just are blinded. They can't help being blind. They, they can't help it. They've chosen not to listen, and we've got to pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit tugs on them and don't give up on them. I've got, I, just had, right. I just had a little um, episode with uh, speaking truth on somebody um, who read. With reason with I'm still here. Well, anyway, I just said that you know, abortion is the choice, but you got to there is consequence with that. There's always consequences mm. with everything we do in life. And, you know, we can make a left turn when we should have turned right, and we'll have to go a lot farther to get there. But we just need to pray. Stephanie, you pray for us too, honey. And let's pray. And do you want to lead us in prayer for these people? Kelly, Suzanne, sure. Esther, and your lady. Lord, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, we ask for your guidance. We ask for your healing touch, your provision, Lord, and always uh, lift up Buster and Suzanne and Kelly and Chandra. And I ask, God, that your hand be upon each one of them, that your healing just flow over them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. God, touch every part of them that need the touch. And, and Lord, that's all of us, every part of us. And, Father, I ask that you be everything that they need as you are, Lord. And help us, God, to walk in your precepts and to follow the path that you've laid out before us in your word. Help us to use all of the armor of God wisely and not forget any parts of it, Lord, and to put it on and keep it on, God. And help us, God, to love each other like you love us, like we're supposed to. And, Father, let us be a blessing to others, to each other, and most of all, Lord, to you. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's one thing people will not reject, and that's love, they will see love as, as kindness, tenderness. <clears throat> they always need uh, love. We need love as human beings. You know, we need kindness. We need respect. We need love and we have to remember that everybody doesn't see things they don't see the truth the only way they're going to listen is through love it's not going to be through judgment it's not going to be through um, condemnation and it's it's not going to be by our self-righteous spirit we have to guard ourselves from mm -hmm. self-righteousness because we are just like them Except saved by grace. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. Um, Stephanie mm -hmm. was talking about a Bible study that she had been doing and was wanting to give that. But the truth is, apparently God saw this was this was going to be it. So, Angie, what's on your what's on your heart tonight? Well. I was just kicking supper. <laughs> the Lord kept knocking. I guess that be instant in all seasons is on my heart tonight. <laughs> That's right. And you know something? We don't know who's going to be watching this. We do not know why God has given us this little small podium to talk from, but we've got to use it wisely and we've got to give an account for everything we do. No pressure. <laughs> well and you know it's, it's here's what the scary thing is it's not just what we do it's every word that we say and all those idle yes. words that come out sometimes and yeah. I catch my and I'm not saying I go around saying bad stuff but when I'm folding laundry and I'm just you know do I talk while I'm doing laundry yes do I talk to God a lot yes 
But there's times that I catch myself grumbling. Well, blah, 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 blah. I can't believe this was left in this box. And I just start talking. Those are idle words. And I've been praying a lot for the last couple months that God would help me to, instead of having any idle words, cut down on them as much as possible and just talk to him. I think about stuff like that a lot. I, I do. You know, apparently talk to myself sometimes, but I think we all do it. Yeah, we do. Um, we definitely do. I know that... Um, oh, my phone's going to hold out for us. Well, can you plug it up? Go get your plug. Okay, I can't even hear you. Hang on. Go ahead. And I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Can you hear me at all now? Am I coming in yet? So can I'm going to get out and you invite me back because I can't hear anything, okay? All right. Go ahead. Lord. Uh, I think it's my internet. I don't know. But whatever. The Satan is not going. Satan. Okay, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, and I remind the devil's workshop. And that's what it is a lot of times. I mean, we. We are human, and we walk in the flesh, and yeah, we're going to complain about some things, but um, there was a song that sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. Who is it, one of the kids? I'm well, my oven just beat for me to put the cornbread in, and I've yet to mix it up, so it's fine. We'll do it in a minute. It's okay. But, you know... Um, when you think about the Lord and what he did for us, and you think about um, the times that he went through that, you know, he didn't have an automatic washer. They probably washed their clothes in a, a creek or the lake or whatever. You think about him walking on earth, and he left heaven for all that. He, he didn't bring any glory with him. He didn't bring a bunch of gold. He didn't bring a bunch of nothing, angels, anything, he just came down, and he died on the cross knowing that not only people standing there throwing stones at him was throwing stones, beating him, pulling his beard out, spitting on him, and all that, but that we were going to be doing it, humankind was going to be doing it all the way until he comes back again. Now, that's something. And yet he still chooses to forgive us when we're, I just talked to uh, one person on uh, Facebook and they were having a discussion about, and it popped up in my news feed, I don't know why, and it was about abortion. And I said, yeah, um, people can do that, but I mean, there are birth control. Well, what if it makes you sick? And I said, well, it won't make you as sick as, as doing that and having to live with it. But you know, some people's conscience are totally severed, and they're not going to care either way. They're just not going to care. We have to remember that. I agree. Their eyes, they're, they're blinded to the truth. And the truth is God will make a way. There is no lie that God has ordained that is not special and precious, including the ones that are choosing death over life. It's, that is just the way it is. Their lives are precious, and so are their, their babies, their unborn babies and their babies. But <clears throat> we have to remember not to be judgmental to them, but love them. You know, I worked for the Crisis Pregnancy Center for a while in Dayton, and uh, it hurt me so bad to go out and give my testimony. But I had to remember that if it saved one baby, 
one baby, if somebody heard me that, you know, was contemplating that or they ran into that situation in their future, hopefully, to goodness, my testimony helped them to decide they didn't want to go there. But there's some people that their conscience are severed. They don't care. They've had several um, aborted babies. They just, they don't care. And our nation is a nation that doesn't care. And the people around us are the ones we're responsible for praying for, loving, witnessing to them. But, you know, sometimes the best thing you can do is just show kindness and love and mercy like the Lord. Because that wins every time. You know, they can uh, reject that for some oh, yeah. time, And then they're going to accept you know, this person is genuine. They really do love me. What makes them that way? Why do they care when everything around them is falling apart? Why do they care about reaching out for others? It's got to, you know, it's like we plant the seeds. God gives the increase. And some water, some planet, but God gives the increase. And he sows seeds in people's lives through our kindness, through us stopping in the middle of the store or wherever we're at and taking a minute out with somebody that needs some attention. They need to know that somebody cares. And that's so important because there's so many lonely um, people. There's so many lonely people. And a lot of these girls that are... Well, I think God leads us. I'm sorry. It lags and and I thought you were stopping for a well, second. Not, I, I was just going to interject and say that there's sometimes that God leads us to certain stores down certain aisles so that we will come in contact with those people. Yes. And that's when it, it, the ball's in our court, so to speak. Are we going to be obedient right. and leave our comfort zone sometimes? Some that's people are easy to talk to because you know them and you're like, hey, how are you? And then there's others um, that we come up on and we're thinking, well, I, I really don't know this person. God, are you sure you want me to say something? Or, you know, are you sure I'm the one? And I think stupid. I've questioned myself so many times. And there's been so many times that I've been really glad that, that I was obedient, even though I was terrified. And yeah. I could talk to a perfect stranger. That's fine. But there's something... And I think it's just the spirit of fear and the enemy makes us scared when we're going to be talking about Jesus. It's, it's, we have to be bold because Jesus was definitely bold, you know, when he let them uh, crucify him. They didn't force him. And then also you were saying, you know, he still loved them. And they even said, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We have to be willing to forgive people that aren't so good to us sometimes and that. And don't want I'm, forgiveness. They I'm don't free. care. Right, they don't care. And I think that God has taught me a lot about forgiving people where I have struggled is when people have hurt other people that I love. And I've had to really pray hard that God would, would give me a piece about this. Help me to forgive this person. And it's not, I've, I've never hated anybody in my life. And wow. thank God, I've you know, I, I don't want to ever come across that decision and, you know, because I can't hate. Um, but there's times that you just don't like the way people do, and it, it's hard right. because we still, we have to love people. We're you know, people and we do. I think that, yes, we are human. And, you know, I've heard people say you can forgive people but it doesn't mean that you have to be an active part of their life either. Sometimes we forgive people, and the best way to honor them and respect them is, is to remove ourselves, you know, from being yeah. an intimate part of their life. Well, God is, has something that we don't have, and that is he can take our sins and put them in the sea of forgetfulness to remember them no more. We, as human beings, do not forget. I feel like, and I might be wrong, and you might have said this to me one time, God may want us to remember, because when we remember somebody else's sin, and we remember the Word of God, then we have to remember ours as well. 
keep, that keeps us humble, knowing where we came from, what he forgave us for, and how much we owe him of our life. You know, in this little right. broadcast that goes on once a week for 30 minutes, maybe 40, is such a minor thing. And I never thought that, um, that I would be worthy of doing any of that stuff especially this but you know god takes the most unlikely people to do a job king david was most unlikely his brothers were a big stature and you know they looked more like king material than david did but samuel said no it's him and god's saying no it was you tonight angie God's got plans for Stephanie, but there's some reason. So I want to hear what you've got to say tonight because apparently it's pretty important. Well, I think I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And I, <clears throat> I'm i not sure, you know, why God saw it in his plans for me to be the one on here tonight. And that's fine. Maybe it was to give me the opportunity to be obedient. And I think he does that sometimes. He gives us, it would have been very easy for me to have said, oh, mom, I'm cooking supper, I'm busy. I don't have 10 minutes, I don't have 20 minutes. But I made the choice, and I thank God for, for allowing me to have that choice, you, you know, to, to obey up. him and to, and, to honor, and to honor you also thank by you. saying, okay, I'll do it, mom. Thank you very well, you're much. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. And you and I love Stephanie and Nikki, Missy and Matt and Jeanette and all my babies. I love them all. And I love all my son in laws and my daughter in law. I love them all. As if I had them from the beginning. They're that, that special to me. I mean, each one of them has done so many good things for me in life. God has blessed me in so many ways. He has blessed me in so many ways. Never be able to thank him enough. And we get the opportunity to tell people about his goodness and how much he loves them. And he wants to do great things in their life. He wants to give them a life and give them life more abundantly to supply their needs. But until he is their Lord, until they say, Lord, I really mean this with all my heart, take over my life and be Lord. When they get to that point in their life, then he can come in and he can do his thing, which is totally make everything wrong right, straighten their paths, make right. sure that all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's what God can do for any one of y'all out there that absolutely that are watching that that's reached the end of your rope. You just don't know what, how you're going to do this, how you're going to make ends meet. You don't know about this. You're praying for your children, maybe your grandchildren. God cares. He loves you, and He wants a relationship with you. Go ahead. Absolutely. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. It takes surrender. And whether that's surrendering our free will or our own will, our human nature, um, the things that we hold so high, and, you know, in our personal standards, I want this, I want that. And I will give you a little bit, and, you know, I've not said anything on Facebook, um, Back in May, I lost my job. Now, I've been there for a couple weeks shy of two years, and that was a really scary thing. You know, I was like, oh, God, why? I don't understand. Why did this happen? And I um, struggled for about a day um, and was heartbroken because I love my job. I love working with my sisters and other people there but, but God it's taken weeks of, you know a few weeks 
but God has opened another door where I'm going to be making more money still at home, you know, and it's back in the insurance world, which I was very comfortable with and, you know, secure with that. I, I feel, I guess, like I understand it a lot more than where I was. God has a way, and you've always told us this, when he closes one door, he always opens another one. Yes. You may not see that open door in the beginning because it's kind of dark in there when you're in that scary spot. Um, that's when we have to trust him. And I told my kids they happened to be sitting right there when I got the call. And, you know, there were four other people. We all lost our jobs within 24 hours. Um, you know, of course, my first reaction was human, and, and I started tearing up and I said oh, I can't believe this has happened but then that gave me an opportunity to tell my twins okay so you know how I'm always telling you we got to trust God we can trust God we have to trust God this is where the rubber meets the road you know yes. it's easy to trust God when it's payday and that job's yes. going and you've just gone grocery shopping your fridge is full your pantry's stocked it's not easy to trust when we just lose our job and we're like, uh oh, there's nothing else gonna be coming in. That's when it comes out, do we trust him? And we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And I definitely her. wasn't leaning to my own understanding. Right. You know, and that may seem like a little thing in the grand scheme of life, but losing a job is scary. Yeah. You know, and I I was like, Oh, but it's okay. It's okay. I feel like God's going to put me exactly where he wants me. And, and that's my prayer. Not God, give me a job, you know, where I'm going to be rich. It's God, put me where you want me. Put me where you want to use me. Because I, I do want to do the will of God. And I, I want to walk in his precepts. I want to follow like I'm supposed to. And, and that's where faith comes in. And without faith, you can't trust. Because it's it takes awesome. faith in knowing who God is and what God's all about. Right. Yeah. So I think a lot of times, well, I think a lot of times God allows us that, do you trust me or not, choice also. And that's part of free will. You know, and, and our reactions to things, like you told us for years, God's watching every reaction, but so is the devil. That's right. And they he knows watching. our triggers because he, he watches us so closely. He That's studies right. us. And, and I've, I've told somebody once, if we study God and his word a quarter of how much Satan and his little minions study us, right, we'd really be on to something there. Because they know our weaknesses. So. Satan knows our weaknesses. Look at Job. I mean, Job was written in the book his testimony went before the whole world. I mean, everything was taken from Job. Everything but his big mouth wife. And she said, why don't you curse God and die? You'd be better off, Job, to die. <coughs> and Job's reaction to that was, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And that's the attitude we've got to keep when things don't go our way when we do lose our job or we go through surgery or we go through a divorce or a death or anything, we have to trust in God and know that he promised us that all things were going to work together for wow. his good, for our good and his good to bring glory to his name. Romans 8, 28. Yeah. You got to go by it. Yeah, I mean, that verse will get you through life. It will. Yeah. So how many people got laid off with you? Four? There were four others, yeah. There were four others, so. Um, but, you know, I don't know how everybody else has reacted. and. Right. I know everybody was upset and scared, just like I was. So I don't, I'm not yeah. sure you know, what paths everybody has chosen, but I do know that God is there the exact same for them as he is for me. Yes, yes, it just yes. depends on whether we trust him and whether we yes. 
asking and, and following. You know I think obedience is the key to so much. It is. But you know something else, Angie? Um, I heard this once and I thought that's got to be true. We can cry, we can beg, we can plead, we can pray. But what really moves God is our faith. That's what moves God. It's mm -hmm. saying, Lord, I know you can do this. Yeah. I know that you keep your promises. I know you cannot lie. And you said by hair, and you open up the word of God, and you read him. He says, bring his word to his remembrance. My God shall supply our needs according to his riches and glory. That's a lot of riches. Hello, Janet. Um, yeah, sorry, I have to share yeah. something up. That's fine. Go ahead now with what you want to say. Are you still? I can't hear anything again. Well, I'm not saying anything. Is why I was going to let you talk some. No, I can't hear anything. Yeah. I think it's where my low battery thing popped up on my phone and I hit close. Um, I'm at 5% now. So. Well, here's what we're going to do. I think that we've done what God wants us to do. I think that it was about faith and about people going through things and about forgiveness. We've covered a lot of ground. If you guys are joining us and you've missed the first of this, would you please be kind enough to share it and go back? And you can catch these on Graham's Coffee Time on YouTube. So right now we're going to pray. Angie's uh, left the building, so to speak. Her phone died. We were planned on Stephanie Hewling being with us tonight. And for some reason, God just said, no, it's going to be Angie. We'll get Stephanie on here too next week, possibly. Um, Tracy won't be back next week either. So I just want to pray right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know the ones that will be watching this and the ones that need your help. They need your blessings. They need your care. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll touch them, Lord, and meet them where they're at. Give your whole heart to Jesus, people. And, and you couldn't hear us, so Father, bless Angie for helping us today and, and bless Stephanie for trying, Lord. And take care of Tracy while she's gone. Remember Kelly and Suzanne and Buster. And also remember um, the lady, the people that Angie worked with that got laid off as well, Lord. Uh, take care of them too. And we praise you, Lord, in this storm. We bless your holy name. And there's people, Lord, that need you so much, Father. And we hope that we have led them, pointed the way to the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, guys, we'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. God bless you. And catch us on Graham's Coffee Time for the rest of our videos. And be sure to share. Thanks.